Next question. How can people with COPD, how can they improve lung function and blood oxygen saturation? Yes, for people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, which is emphysema or severe asthma, uh, what happens with them that part of the lungs, most commonly it's lower part of the lungs, maybe also because we don't use the diaphragm properly, we chronic chest breathers. What happens with them that not the whole uh, area of the lungs, like the whole volume of the lungs, not all alveoli participate in gas exchange. That can happen due to accumulation of mucus for people with asthma, the airways are inflamed, so the body is not able to clear mucus out of the lungs. And due to also other factors, sometimes it may relate to smoking, sometimes not necessarily. But the problem is that the alveoli can become clogged with mucus. Sometimes alveoli starts to like, instead of very small air sacs, like as alveoli should be in order to provide efficient oxygen extraction from air, we become large, very large cells and often filled with mucus. And sometimes even the whole bran uh, branches or bronchioles can be totally blocked with mucus. And as a result, if doctors look on x-ray, if we do blood oxygen test results, we are going to uh, find out that maybe one, let's say one quarter or some other part of the lungs, in severe cases, maybe half of the lung is not functioning properly. And of course, as a result, these people suffer a lot. Uh, for example, they would suffer, uh, especially due to the inability to do physical exercise. So they, they start walking and they, they are breathless because the body is not able to extract oxygen from air. So that, now the question is, are we able to recover the alveoli? And experience actually of thousands of people, especially in Russia, where Dr. Buteyka uh, trained 200 doctors to apply this Buteyka briefing retraining techniques, is very positive in a way that even after one briefing session, which may be 20, 30 minutes long, these people are actually able to measure that the blood oxygen test is improving. And uh, that happens due to the following tricky effect. We do so-called reduced breathing exercise. And when people re do reduced breathing exercise, the CO2 level normally, for example, in the lungs and in healthy people in the blood is going to be higher. We have chronic hyperventilation, so they start to normalize the CO2 level. But here is kind of a physiological effect, which if even uh, many, many doctors, those doctors who are professionals in respirology or professionally deal with people with COPD and emphysema, we kind of confuse the effect because what happens here with people with COPD, those people, we already have too high level of CO2 in the arterial blood. So uh, if this arterial CO2 is measured, it's going to be above the norm. And that is because gas exchange does not take place efficiently. So the oxygen level is too low, but CO2 level is too high in the blood. Now, how then, like it looks like total paradox, how reduced breathing, like if we try to slow down the breathing, can help to normalize these abnormalities with the arterial blood. That when we start to increase the CO2, we slow down the breathing, we slow down the breathing closer to the medical norm. CO2 is most powerful dilator, and some studies say it's most potent vasodilator because it relaxes smooth muscles of the human body. And therefore, bronchi and bronchioles are um, airways which are surrounded by smooth muscles around them. And when these smooth muscles relax, that allows a better flow of oxygen into deeper parts of the lungs. And as a result, when people with COPD, uh, if we do a briefing session, let's say 20, 30 minutes long, and they measure the blood oxygen saturation, which is very easy these days, you can buy oximeters, we like. 30, 40 dollars, very easy to use. They measure blood oxygen saturation before the briefing session. And it's going to be whatever the kind of ordinary number is. But when we do a briefing session, the blood oxygen saturation is improved. Why again? Because CO2 allows to increase air flow, air access to other parts of the lung which were previously blocked for different reasons. And therefore, as a result, larger part of the lungs is able to participate in gas exchange. And what happens next here is, since larger part of the lungs is participating in the gas exchange, normal gas, like closer to the medical norm, then the 
high CO2 level in the blood starts to reduce because better gas exchange takes place in the lungs, whereas the oxygen level starts to improve. So therefore, paradoxically again, on the first look, like somebody may think, well, reduced breathing exercises is going to increase my CO2, but I already have too much CO2 in my arterial blood. We get higher CO2 in the lungs. Normal people, ordinary people with normal lung function test results, all surface of lungs functioning normally, they would get high CO2 in the blood, that is correct, because they do not have ventilation perfusion mismatch. But people with COPD, they have a mismatch due to not functioning part of the lungs, but this part of the non-functioning part of the lung starts to work better. And therefore, they again, oxygen level in the blood improves, and this is great for them because they would feel more energy, they would be able to walk longer and faster, uh, having less breathlessness. Whereas the CO2 in the arterial blood starts also get closer to the north. So this is just an initial part. Often the students notice also big improvements even in two, three days uh, after we start breathing exercise and they better health, better well-being so by practicing one, two hours of reduced breathing. And here we can use Bottega reduced breathing exercises uh, one way, learning how to slow down breathing. But even better, and I had such students uh, as well myself who compare it, like my students compare breathing devices with Bottega exercise. And most of my students, especially those students who have respiratory problems, they find that breathing devices, for example, using Zafralov breathing device, some Azdrav, some other device, DIY breathing device can be done yourself, like piece of vinyl tubing, piece of uh, plastic bottle to cut. And to breathe through this device also allows to increase CO2 in the lungs. And that also helps these people, again, with COPD to improve lung function. But in the long term, the goal should be to slow down the breathing and to improve results for the body oxygen test. So we do special body oxygen test results, which for these people has very strong correlation with the blood oxygenation. So CP or control post test is a central uh, test of the breathing retraining method called the Buteyka technique. And the technique that I use with DIY devices, people who use the Frolov can also apply this technique. So that gradually we are able to improve or normalize function of larger and larger portions of the lungs. And I spoke with Andrei Novozhilov, who is now a chief medical doctor of the Buteyka clinic in Moscow. So there are five uh, doctors who apply breathing retraining only treating patients with really serious health problems, sometimes people come to them with oxygen ta tanks and often in two, three months these people are able to go walk for five, ten kilometers. Few of them may be able to start jogging, uh, but lung function restoration to restore larger parts of the lungs often takes many months, in some cases years. But what is really fascinating about the work of these people, and I also had people again with COPD who improve the lung function test result, there are many cases when these students restore the lung so that when doctors do any lung function test or they do x-ray, they are going to say that these are like normal lungs. So these people can do normal physical exercise, they get again great sleep and many other like normal factors of life they reappear again just due to breathing retraining. So the short answer is yes, with breathing retraining, with doing reduced breathing exercises, these people are able to notice improvements very fast, even again 20-30 minute session, but in the long run, if they continue to practice, if they persist, if they, they are able to retrain, slow down their breathing back to the medical norm, the ventilation, blood gas parameters, then they are able to function as well as normal or as well as healthy people.